Hey guys, I hope you can hear me. The, uh, the machine's pretty loud. So uh, what I'm making today is a cable drum for a, a winch or a hoist. And this one basically is, is used for a type of elevator. And it, all it is is a piece of 8 inch outside diameter, 7 inch inside diameter, 1020 DOM tube and it's about a little over 19 inches long and it gets a groove cut in it for a 3 8 diameter cable and it's left hand thread on one side right hand thread on the other side and they're timed together and they kind of meet in the middle so you can see this is the start point here start point here and they're pretty much perfectly synchronized end to end and that's controlled electronically inside the, con the CNC control this is uh, I'm running this job on a Mori Siki SL20 with a Yaznek LX3 control and pre prior to this I actually ran this job on a Mazak slant turn 15 with a Fanuc 6T control circa 1980 ran this job just fine not a problem it actually ran the job a little bit better. You can see uh, this is where the, the thread terminates and it's slightly out of sync from left hand to right hand and I'm not exactly sure why. It won't hurt a thing. It just kind of looks looks a little bit odd cosmetically. So this this part is uh, going to be going to have some hubs welded into it uh, after I'm done here. So really there's no there's no tight tolerances. The only thing that's important is that the pitch diameter from the left hand side to the right hand side has to be the same because they have two parallel cables and if the pitch diameters are different uh, one cable will have more tension than the other cable so that's the only thing that I have to have to hold closely other than that as long as the grooves don't have any burrs uh, it's a good part so ID clamped on some soft jaws on this end tailstock on the other end with a plate that fits pretty snugly on the ID on the other end this part's actually too long for this machine. It has 20 inches of Z-axis travel, but because it sticks out from the chuck so far, uh, the end of the part's actually beyond the travel of the turret. Uh, but luckily, the thread starts about an inch in from the end of the part, so I don't have to. I don't have to worry uh, that the part's actually longer than the machine can accept. I also make another version of this part that's half again longer. And I cannot make that on this machine. I have to use the, the slant turn Mazak because it has uh, basically almost twice as much Z axis travel. So, um, total cycle time on this is like 18 minutes. Yeah, this is the insert that I use. This is a Kenna metal. And uh, there's the number for you right there. And I tried, I tried about, about 10 different inserts before I found one that would work adequately to run this job. Uh, I tried every single version of the top notch inserts, which is what I normally use for grooving. Uh, and eventually I had to go to this style, uh, the tool holder. It's a more of a deep groove insert, so the tool holder uh, pinches the top and bottom. And uh, yeah, that's an eighth inch diameter uh, ball nose on the end of that insert and it's got this little peak in the middle that's the chip breaker and that's the difference that that makes this insert work and other inserts don't the material is 1020 DOM tube and it's notoriously hard to control the chips on that material and this stuff doesn't disappoint it's gummy and it just it just won't break a chip uh, I'm running the machine at uh, 250 RPM and I think if I did the math right on an 8 inch diameter that's about just over 500 surface feet. Uh, so 500 surface feet with coolant on steel that's you know that's very conservative for uh, you know a beefy trigon roughing insert or something but for these delicate little groove inserts you're cooking right along and uh, this insert actually it will it will only last about six maybe eight parts and then it's done uh, 
it'll still cut but it just won't break a chip anymore and when it won't break a chip uh, I can't I can't leave it to run on its own because it'll ball up and just make a horrible mess all right so here's a close-up of the groove and uh, this is a 3 16 radius gauge and uh, you can see we got a nice a nice fit there in the groove and then it, there's a 20 thousandths radius on the top as a corner break and that's all programmed in cut in the machine and so the way this works here's that little eighth inch uh, ball nose groove tool it basically just steps over uh, I think about I want to say it's eight thousandths per pass and uh, I did a calculation to figure out what's called the cusp height which is kind of like the height of the peak between passes for a ball nose tool it's mostly used for 3d milling but the same the same uh, criteria applies here and so basically what happens is the machine runs two programs there's a main program and a subroutine and the main program calls a starting coordinate somewhere like about here and then it runs a G32 threading cycle and it comes in both in X and Z so it comes in on an angle but timed as a thread and that's how you get this lead in shape here so it's coming in on a 45 degree angle to a point somewhere here inside the groove then it runs all the way along the right hand side rapids to the end and then does a reverse of that same move to do the left hand thread and uh, this is all programmed from an Excel spreadsheet so I wrote a spreadsheet that tells me basically the the coordinate location for every every point where this insert needs to make a finished pass and then it spits that information out into a text file that I can copy into my program for the g-code and uh, the roughing so for each uh, for the finished pass each start point has its own line in the program for the roughing what I do is I just tell it the start point and then it runs through the sub program and when it comes back I tell it to come back about 50 thousandths short and then it starts and runs a loop through the sub program and it loops as many times as it needs to to step over to the other side and so each time I step down I step over fewer times and I think it makes like six steps down to rough taking like I want to say it's 50 thousandths on the diameter each time and then the finish passes I want to say there's 45 uh, actual coordinates for the finish pass but like I said all that happens in about 18 minutes so that's the finished part and you can see the the surface finish is excellent and that's because this is a brand new insert as the parts run and the insert starts to wear it'll get cloudier and cloudier and then like I said it'll stop breaking the chip and we'll have to change that insert um, but uh, consumable cost on this part is is minimal so when I quoted this job the customer told me that you had to run this on a mill with a fourth axis and to basically cut the grooves out with a ball nose end mill and in their, from their experience anyone who tried to cut it with a lathe ended up with chatter and a really bad surface finish and I suspect what was happening is their vendors were trying to cut that groove with a full width form tool and you just can't do that it's too much tool pressure and you'll get chatter every time so what what I do where I step it out with that eighth inch uh, ball nose mill or ball nose uh, groove tool on this part here it's fine I get good surface finish but on the 30 inch long part even with that small tool I, I have a tendency to get some chatter at the very end um, so you, you just can't push this DOM tube it's not stable now if it was if it was all welded up with the uh, spools inside and the shaft through it you might have a chance but I, I think your tool life would be really bad and I really think you'd have a hard time keeping the chatter out uh, so like I said they they told me you had to run it in a mill with a fourth axis which I don't have I did the math and figured it would take about 45 minutes to cut this part on a mill with a fourth axis and then I ran the numbers for I ran the numbers for cutting the part on a lathe and I estimated 250 passes and it was still 
less than half the time to run the part in in a mill and uh, yeah if I had a part like this to run every day I could make a lot of money uh, we were originally supposed to make 300 of these parts a year and it just never materialized I think I've run maybe 75 in the last three years something like that so when I, when I first quoted this part I did not own a CNC lathe uh, I had a mill but no fourth axis and uh, I quoted the job, like I said, 250 passes on a CNC lathe, and, uh, and they gave me the PO, and I made one prototype actually on an engine lathe, and uh, it was basically identical to this part, except that I couldn't do the taper in and taper out. I had to undercut the ends and the middle, because it was basically impossible for me to coordinate coming in on that 45 and coming out on the 45. The CNC can do it no problem, but on an engine lathe that's really tricky. Uh, but functionally it was the same part. And I did it exactly the same way as I do it on the CNC. I, I, I used my Excel sheet to make a whole list of coordinate points for the start and stop of the threads. And then uh, my lathe has uh, a coarse enough thread to match up. This is 7 16 pitch between, between grooves. Um, and my machine, my lathe had enough pitch to do that so I actually cut one of these on the engine lathe and it's been several years but I, I would guess it took me an entire day to do that uh, and like I said the CNC can do it in 18 minutes so that's pretty cool